Welcome back to the old Two Stroker YouTube channel. My name's Wayne, and uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to do episode two, Let's Talk Trucks. And the truck we're going to be talking about today is this 1980 Peterbilt 359 extended hood 3408 Caterpillar show truck. And I've got all the original build documentation from Peterbilt on it. So let's dig in and find out what makes this one special all right guys like we chatted about in the last video i have the peterbilt dot build sheet for this truck here so let's learn a little bit about it so straight away we can see that it was originally a pre-cup engine so we know that it's been converted to a direct injection at some point in its life because it's obviously direct injected from A, the sound it makes, and B, you got a pretty good shot of the motor when we fired it up, right? So, a couple of the things that really stood out to me here, just like on my other truck, originally, this truck being a little newer, it did have all tubeless wheels and tires, but originally, it does appear as though had all aluminum alcoas out in the back and then polished insides another thing it had was all chrome lug nuts which are gone which is a total shame i'm sure they're going to be very expensive to buy but so that part of this truck was originally this truck was used as a dealer meeting truck so it was a show truck from new peterbilt would use this truck to go around and use as a, a rolling brochure or sales advertisement etc you use to meet customers it's things like that uh it's the story i got with it and it makes sense from the way it's spec'd very big power nice long hood hey guys so i was editing this video it kind of occurred to me that I didn't really elaborate on this, and, and I kind of wanted to in the video. So what makes these whole 359s with the big hoods more rare than, say, a regular old 359 is the fact that they didn't do... So this was before the era. This is 1980, okay? So this is before the era of big hoods all over the place. And what I mean by that is back then... They only did a, a extended hood. I don't want to say only, but 99.9% .9 of the time, the truck would only have a big hood when it was ordered with big power that wouldn't fit under a normal size hood. So a lot of guys call the regular truck, you know, a short hood, and that's just not the case. They're not short hood trucks. They're standard hood trucks. Peterbilt did three hood sizes. This is this one which is 127 inch the standard hood is a 119 and the short hood i believe is a 113 and the short hood was a fiberglass hood uh it was all like one piece and you could only really get those with uh real short power like uh 6v92 you couldn't get them with an 892 i'm not sure what what cummins availability was on those but i know you could get one of the cummins engines i believe i don't know which one but so this this cat 3408 would simply just wouldn't fit under a standard hood and so that's the reason for the large hoods peter peterbilt started doing that way back in the 60s like that 351 if you notice on that truck if you go back and rewatch that video you'll see that radiator grill has three bolts on it and that symbolizes that was exclusive to a v12 truck in those 351s they did that because the radiator core was thicker and the grill needed to be thicker to, to hide it that's that's where big hood stuff originated was big power applications that didn't fit under normal hood like a v12 didn't fit under a standard hood so peterbilt designed the larger hood to accommodate them uh then later in the years the the people started to really like the look of the larger hood trucks and you started to see it done for 
re for reasons other than large power. You know, in, in 87 was his final year of the 359. They did the oh i forget what they call them the classics maybe i don't know i don't know what the peterbilt name is but they did like 300 of what we call numbered trucks which have a serial number it was the last 359 359s ever made and they were all big hood big sleeper but none of them were big power they were just standard 3406 trucks uh but that was 87 and that's kind of when that whole brochure truck big hood thing it's when it really started to catch on and then like all 379s are big hoods like almost all of them anyway like there's way more big hood 379s than there is short hoods at least that you see anyway so in the later years it wasn't such a rare thing to have a big hood truck uh but in the early years when when this stuff when this stuff originated there was a reason behind it it wasn't it wasn't done just for aesthetics and looks it was done because you simply can't fit that va cat under a standard hood under standard hood so hopefully i just wanted to touch on that a little bit also while i got y'all here thought i'd make mention we got our old two stroger shirts in they are on the website old two stroker.com check it out good shirt it's got a picture of mossy broke on the back super cool check them out you'll love them and uh thanks to all of you that have bought stuff from our website and supported us it's really helping uh we're trying to um bring you more cool stuff so i'd like to do some shirts with some of the other trucks we just got to get some of these sold first so thanks again everybody the majority of what makes this thing so odd, not odd, but rare, is the big V8 Caterpillar. Most of the cats of the day were the 3406As. I don't think the B was out yet. Maybe, I want to say the B come out 81, 82, but I'm not a cat guy, so I could be totally off base with that. Uh, so the paint scheme, great paint scheme on it. I think a lot of what why the dealer chose why they chose this to use as a dealer truck is because big power great paint you know it's a good looking truck in 1980 this was one hell of a ride so moving on what else do we have we have your so i want to touch on this first the custom steering wheel now normally this these trucks would have had like let's say my green truck came with a, it's just a black three spoke peterbilt steering wheel nothing fancy it was like a foam it was their new style steering wheel they get when they got rid of the white bone steering wheel that everybody loves chrome columns still in place that's factory to the truck but this is the real special item in this cab is this steering wheel here these are very hard to find they were made from a company called VIP, which is Vehicle Improvement Products. And they take a special hub. You can see it, the wheel physically bolts on. They're very hard to find. I've been looking for one of these since I got into trucks and hard to find stuff and things of that nature. I've been looking for one of these wheels for years and it took me many tens of thousands of dollars to finally get a truck with one. We've been through a lot of trucks and we finally got one of these old girls. So I don't know what I want to do with it. I, I, it's original as truck, so I hate to take it out. But at the same time, I think the cab over would look insane with this in there. So I just, I can't make up my mind on what I want to do yet. Um, the shift knob is not, I mean, nowadays they're kind of rare, hard to find, but it's not an overly rare item. All the Peterbilts used to come with them back in the day. Uh, so that's just, you know, run-of-the-mill Hanko knob. Not not an overly rare situation there at all. Uh, full gauge package, which is cool. Nothing super out of the ordinary up here. When, when you get, when you would order big power, nine times out of 10, you would have the full gauge package anyway. Um, so the other thing that this truck does have, which a lot of you thought my 
cab over had is an air window on the passenger side and this one has the actual air window you can see i've tried to tape it up like seven times it will not stay up so i don't know if it needs a regulator or whatnot the dash the switch for it should be on the dash oh there it is right there yep Other than that, nothing too crazy going on in here. I uh, did have two air ride seats from the factory. It was specced with those, but but these are not. I don't believe these are the original seats. I thought they were, but if you look, they're Eldorados, and that's different to what's on the build sheet. Now, these, these seats by themselves are kind of scarce and hard to find nowadays, even though I guess you could still order them new. Nobody orders them new, I guess. From what I hear, guys either loved them or they hated them. And they could be hell on your back because of the way they pivot back here, I guess. I don't know. I've always wanted a set of them because it's just a very cool period mod. A lot of guys back in the 80s and 70s would buy Eldorado seats and put them in their truck. And so I've always wanted a set. I th always thought they looked great with this. This I don't know if you call this like diamond pleat is... Eldorado 101. So I've always wanted a set. Now I got a set. That's cool. What else can we tell you about this thing? Well, it's got the large sleeper on it, 60 inch, 63 inch, I think, actually. Uh, mattress is still there. I'm sure that smells delicious. And the other cool thing about this truck, just like my cab over, is it has this rear window is factory to the truck so were the load lights that are melted right off of it but the window is factory to this and i think that's super cool also documented here in the line sheet what we're missing is we're missing some tank steps it did have steps i don't know where they went that's a shame somewhere maybe this is it that's the air window. Yeah, so this is the seat. Anchor Lock Monarch, which I've never seen those. I don't know what they what they look like, but that's not the usual. And you can see they were specced on both driver and passenger side. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Somewhere. There it is. The window install. On the bunk. Hard to find deal. But overly not, not a crazy rare truck as far as, it's just, it's, it's in a different league than the cab over. Um, the cab over, it was so early in the big power days that that, that truck is just kind of a unicorn. Whereas this one, it, this started to be a lot more common. This was after the KTA 600s had come out. Cat was a little late to the game with these uh, V8s. But they had the 1693 back in the day, which were a powerhouse. So, you know, they didn't really necessarily need a V engine. I'm not sure what made them do it. But let's uh, see what we got in here. We got more than more than one belt. I have yet to go through all this. We just kind of glanced at it briefly. But I haven't really touched anything here. Oh, window crank. Flasher. I've got so many of these now. Sick. Intake boot, exhaust clamp, all the exhaust clamps. Kitty cat filter. Boy, probably not going to use that anytime soon. I wonder if it fits the truck, actually. These are totally different size filters. What is this? This has got to be a water filter. I think this is a water filter. It says Donaldson on it. I would bet that's for the cooling system. Um, this is... Is this oil or fuel? Fuel. Huh. It's 
so that's kind of the same style as that one. I wonder if it has two filters. I didn't think it did. It's got that water separator and then the bigger one. All the filters. Bud nut tool. What's that even mean? Oh, no shit. I have one of these. Oh, no, wait. This is... This is a new air splitter. Does it work? Boy, these things can be hard to do on camera. Wow. Yeah, sick. That's a bonus. Jeez, that thing's like brand new. They're like 150 bucks. Sick. What else is in here? What's left of a mirror? Some lug nuts. Any chance these are chrome? <laughs> no. Not that there'd be any chrome left on them at sitting on the coast like that. And then it looks just like uh, all we got in there is. This is all just lug nuts that that big game here with it. We got two flare kits. Air tank drain. One of you guys that asked me about air systems and how they remove air. My trucks are all too old to have an air dryer on them, but all newer trucks do. So like this is what goes in your air tank and you pull this cord and it moves the valve and lets air out like that. And when it lets air out, it's the tank. The drain is at the bottom of the tank, so the it lets whatever any water that's accumulated in there out as well. Some nice electrical tape. That's probably good. Nothing. Nothing real interesting in here. What's this thing? Just a piece of pipe. Bizarre. Jimmy, what are you doing? How are you doing? You crazy nuts. Something cool in the flare kits? I don't know. Something cool hiding in here? Nope. That's just triangles, so maybe maybe the other one's flares. All the fire extinguishers. Oh, this one's heavier. What's in here? Hella. Driving lights? I didn't know they made flare kits. Yeah, just another set. Must be a little bit newer or something. Well, there's one, uh, Oh, there's another air tank drain. See, that's the old style where you'd have to turn the valve manually. Those are like what's on my Brockway. Um, let's get a look at what's that? It's like an antenna or something. I don't know what that thing is. A snap clean on it. Huh. Oh, you know what? I bet it is. I bet you it's the thing for this that goes in between there. Probably about the right side. Yeah, that's what that is. I don't know how these things got broken, but boy, are they pooched. <sighs> Nothing real cool in there. Um, let's walk around on the passenger side of this truck. There's a big compartment underneath the sleeper that I haven't been into. So I'm anxious about that. I don't think there's anything in the glove box. Nothing cool in there. Is that a cigarette lighter? That was an ignition lock at some point. Or the piece to this. I wonder if that's maybe where they got the key. Yeah. No, 
that's not for there. I wish that would stay up. Uh, all right. Let's see what's in here now. Let's see if I get eaten by anything. Like I said, this truck has been sitting completely untouched since we found it. I haven't I haven't so much as looked at anything back here, so this is the only thing that I noticed was just flew out of here. Think in here, boys. That is so that goes over the sleeper doors. I have them for my green peat, also. I don't know what this is. Oh, shit, that's the dispatch pouch. Sick. I was wondering if that was here. It's in the build sheet. I don't know where it goes. We'll have to find that out. What's in this box? Oh! Found the stink, fellas. Oh boy, that's ripe too. Oof. There's the mice. Oh no shit. Those bastards eat the eat the box, but this is the seat belts for the truck. Goddamn mice. This is a belt. Man, these look like they were new. Yeah, he must have bought these. This is a shoulder belt. Look at that. This is brand new shoulder belt set up and that's the instructions for it I don't know what the deal is with that just bolts for it wow they've been there a minute I've never seen that very cool be a lot cooler freaking mice didn't need it what else is in here anything Is that freaking stink? What is this for? This is one of the grab bars from inside. Oh. It's a much nicer shape than anything else. Let's uh let's get a look and see if there's anything else maybe cool in here. I guess we're getting right in, boys. Oh, against my better judgment. You could kind of stand in here. Boy, I wish this door would stay open. <laughs> what do you think's under the bunk? Mattress, anything? Let's look. Oh, airheads. Love those. Mm. I can't get in there. Ugh. Jesus Christ, that's disgusting. I'm gonna need 10 showers. What else is in here? Let's see if I can get a light. Man, the sleeper's friggin' destroyed. did get us a badass brand new
at that. Where do you suppose this even mounts? Man, I wish those instructions weren't so tore up. This thing is sick. It looks like he bought two of them. So the factory belts were nothing more than they just hooked on here and one on the other side and then the middle and it was just a lap belt. So I'm not sure where those would mount. Boy, that's cool. There, um, there isn't a whole lot else to talk about here other than that sweet car phone from the 90s. Wow. And like, like I had talked about in the beginning, somebody converted this engine to direct injection. Uh, and this switch here would be for your glow plugs when the truck was originally, like I said, it was pre-cup. So they had glow plugs and what you would do is turn the knob. What the hell? You go push it in, turn it to the left. That's for heat to heat the glow plugs and then push it and turn it right and that starts the truck. So pretty cool. Golly, I can't believe there's a friggin' brand new seatbelt in there. Sorry, GoPro turned off because it was too hot. Garbage. Anyway, the only other thing I want to make mention of that's on the build sheet here and I haven't seen is battery disconnect switches mounted in the cab. How cool is that? Uh, like on the cab floor. I don't know if that's common or not. Maybe one of you guys can tell me, but it's, it's noted in the build sheet. And I thought that was pretty cool. What a great spot for those. Uh, yeah, so... That's going to do it for this truck. I hope you all have enjoyed this tour of a relic from years past. Um, we found that NOS, uh, what do you call it? Seatbelt. I thought that was really cool. I'm going to Google that part number and see if it's still any good. Maybe I can find some mounting instructions for it online or something. I'd just be super curious to know how that all works together. But yeah if you guys like this series of um you know talking about trucks let me know put it down in the comments uh i'd love to hear about it what, what you guys think if this is educational or helpful for any of you guys if you have any questions feel free to put them below uh yeah you know let me know if you, if you like what you see here keychains are still available um they're on the website so help yourself Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one.